Private Lender Podcast, Episode 88. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Heraclitus, who said, No one that encounters prosperity does not also encounter danger. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. What is going on, Lender Nation? That's right. Keith Baker here coming at you sort of live. And I'm finally back in the saddle behind the microphone kicking out a brand new episode for you guys. Got a lot to talk about. And uh, <laughs> until I hit, I was ready to talk until I hit record. And now I'm like, uh, okay, it's almost like stage fright all over again. So this is good. Happy Black Friday, y'all. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. And I hope none of you went to jail for fighting with that crazy uncle. So, yeah, anyhow, uh, welcome to episode 88 of the Private Lender Podcast. And if you're uh, interested in learning how to mitigate risks in, pri in private mortgages, boring, <laughs> then you're in the right place. But if you want to learn from my mistakes and, well, no, there is no way. If you want to learn from my mistakes so you can avoid them, then pull up a chair, pour yourself a drink, and um, let's take some notes because uh, I think I got a few things I can tell you that might help you out. So, Again, here we are. The title of this episode is Never Trust, Always Verify for various reasons. So without, because um, I can't find the script that I kind of hashed out, um, here we go. Topic number one, Never Trust, Always Verify. So a few months ago, back at the Quest IRA event, it, was, uh, it came to my attention that um, some people were not, some borrowers were not performing as uh, as agreed, and I had I had interviewed these borrowers uh, on my show, and <laughs> I had been on their uh, their podcast as well, and so it I don't know it just it didn't sit well with me, and I don't want to name names because I don't want to you know I do believe in due uh, due process, uh, and I have not spoken to the said borrower. I've only gotten one side of it, one side of the story. I should say that be from the from the lender. But nonetheless, it's it's a topic I I feel like I have to to bring up even if it um, even if it is uncomfortable, and you know these uh, allegedly the, the borrowers are you know professional uh, real estate folks, and uh, the the, uh, the lender used IRA money. So long story short, the borrower or the lender gave the borrower all the money up front, and nothing was ever performed on the house. No. No repairs, no remodels, nothing was done. The house still sits as it was the day the lender agreed to do the loan. So the obvious choice is okay. You can you can foreclose. However, since he gave all the money up front, nothing has been repaired. He's in, in essence over overpaid for a house that he cannot get his money back from in a, in a quick sale. He, he takes it to a wholesaler. He'll, he'll he'll lose maybe only half of his money, but. That is, that's better than nothing. I think uh, lick your wounds and you and you move on. I know um, I've had to do that. So let's break this down and see what happened as best I can from without involving you know names or anything. Um, why the never trust, always verify pillar has, uh, or why that's a pillar in the private lender podcast and hopefully the forthcoming private lender academy. So first off. Everybody's a salesman. This borrower pitched a good idea. The lender said, yeah, I want to do this. I remember the lender being excited. He came to me, found the podcast after he'd made the loan and had reached out to me and had some questions. And I, I answered them. And as the, as the loans went on, uh, they were ultimately paid but not paid as agreed. There were some late payments, penalties, whatnot that the borrower agreed to pay. So my understanding is so far so good. He just didn't pay on time, but he, you know, he paid the penalties that were allowed within the, the documentation. Now the term of the original loan is due or past due and the borrower has not repaid the balloon payment, has paid the interest and penalties, but hasn't repaid the principal amount. And then the borrower goes out and takes a look, look at the house, which I think you can tell right then 
this was uh, this borrower's. Sorry, guys, I misspoke. It was the lender's first loan. Allegedly, this was his first loan. So, especially if you're if you're brand new to the game, go see, touch, taste the property. Go walk it with permission from the the owner. Don't just show up unannounced. But go check it out and 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 see what you're what you're lending against. Because if if you don't want that property as is for the price that you're about to loan out, walk away. Walk away. Do not loan on it. Because you can get stuck with that property. It's potential. It's a potential. And if you're stuck with it, you want to get all your money back, not just half or some of it. I mean, that is one nice thing about real estate is using or using collateral, such as real estate, is you can mitigate some of those losses significantly. Uh, but you got to do it. It's all done up. All the work is done up ahead and not behind. So when the when the the loan lender called me and was you know asking what he could do, I had some questions and found out that he had loaned the uh, full amount up to seventy percent of uh, of the value of the of the ARV, I should say, and then the borrower took the money and used it, but not on that house. He used it on the house next door and turned it into a rental. Now, if you don't escrow repairs and and the rehab. This 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 is what you can run into because now you've given. Let's use some simple math. He's he's this lender's given seventy thousand dollars on a house that's really worth about forty. Maybe yeah, tops. Quick sale. Uh, you might be able to get forty from it, but he's he's essentially paid seventy because he didn't withhold the thirty thousand dollars in rehab. So that was given to the lender all at once. That's a cardinal sin. Uh, not to chide this borrower because I know he's listening, but it's a lesson I know he's learned, and uh, he's you know trying to figure out uh, how to handle this. And I, uh, I appreciate him coming to me and and asking uh, for advice and questions and and uh, just getting some support, basically. Uh, so anyhow, back to back to the mechanics of the loan. So all the money was given up front. So now there's no incentive for the buyer or the borrower to actually use those funds. And what really hurts is when this is a, you know somebody you trust or somebody you've you've come into their fold or uh, you know in my case I it was a friend of mine. <laughs> so um but nonetheless this is what happens or it can happen. So you don't give them all the money up front, you escrow it whether that be into an attorney's escrow account or the title company doesn't matter have have escrow set up for the the funds now whether you want to charge interest on all those funds that's up to you and between you and the borrower but that don't just give somebody 70 percent of the value of a house especially if you've never done business with them i'm not talking about me doing this and my my, my friend landed and partner landed or, or my friend chris or or ray uh, i still wouldn't do that but it's easier to do that with somebody you trust no like and trust and they've been doing they've been doing it for a very long time to my knowledge, this borrower and this lender had never met, and this was the first loan they'd done between each other, and this was the first lender's the lender's first loan as well. So, this is the area that I'm I'm speaking to. Uh, if if you don't know your borrower very well, definitely verify. Don't give all the money up front. Uh, they did close at a title company. That was that was good, and everything was like I said. Everything other than the loan not being repaid, everything was okay. The borrower uh, honored. The, the commitments and the late penalties and paid all that up until recently. And the other thing is, you know, like I said, go, go touch and see and taste the property. Cause if you don't want it as is, then not walk away. I can't stress that enough. If, if things you have, to, when you, when you make the loan, let's just go ahead and assume you're going to take the property back. Let's just start there. And if you start with that in mind, then you can reverse engineer some safety steps along the way. So go go see the property. Don't give all the money up front. Get title insurance, all that, which is great. That was all done, but in this case, that's not going to help. Uh, the title insurance w- won't help if you get swindled, so to speak. Uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, what I recommended this lender to do is, if he can prove that money was agreed and loaned on property A, subject property A, uh, 123 Main Street, 
All the paperwork was for that. And then no money was ever spent on the subject property, but went to another one. Then I think, you know, I'm no attorney, but I would talk to a district attorney and see if I, if, if I had a case for fraud. Uh, seems plausible, if possible, if, if nothing else. It may not be. Uh, it, you know, I'm not here to speak on uh, the definitively on that because I've never had, to, fortunately, I've never had to uh, file suit for anybody to, or, or for fraud uh, on anybody. But it's an avenue that I would check out if I was in this particular borrower's, borrower's shoes as uh, uh, you go ahead and foreclose, get what money you can back and just uh, add that to the lawsuit if, if uh, what was lost uh, would be the only the only thing I, I've been kind of noodling on this for a while. It's about the only thing I can think uh, that this, this this lender has left. The only move that he has left, uh, you know, and, and like I told him, it's like it's got to be legit. You can't just you know yell fraud. You got to be able to to prove it uh, at the same time. So I hopefully will get some updates from this borrower here and there, and I will update you, Lender Nation, as well, because that is the goal of this uh, podcast is to help help keep you safe. And now that I've gotten that over i don't know if you can tell I'm now now i'm back in the flow now if i feel like i'm i, I truly am back in the saddle so i want to bring up a, a few other things that i've been wanting to talk to you guys about over the last few months and now that the hiatus is over i, I feel like I, I can talk it has been quite a ride uh, as you can imagine that uh, why well, i needed to take the the hiatus i needed to focus on uh, a job transition uh, and some family things uh, which I I'm still doing, but I really itching to get back in behind the microphone and and talk to the lender nation again, and talk about private lending and and things that uh you know this sounds geeky but things that I am passionate about passive real estate I just love it, uh but as you are well aware and some of you have emailed me hey you're gonna do another episode thank you for that um, over the last few months uh, got you know separated and learning a new normal with the kids and the soon to be ex-wife which is uh, so far so good you know it's it's going r- really well all things considered uh grateful for that and but I was also able to transition into more of a, a consultancy career so still doing insurance but now I have a little it's funny I have more control but less control over my time it's 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 kind of odd but it has been a very positive experience to say the least and I, I really do look forward to continuing that for a while. Even though I want to grow the podcast and you know all that stuff, I, I do like I like my day job. What can I say? I find it interesting. I get to I get to see these massive turbines and chemical plants and refineries and oil wells and I don't know. The kid in me just loves it, so I don't foresee me giving that up anytime soon. But at the same time, I really want to start pushing with this private lender stuff more and more uh, and heavier and. Um, one of the one of the coolest things that's happened over the last few months that I've been away is if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see that in early November, I got to meet one of my heroes, uh, Getty Lee, bassist, lead singer, keyboard player from the band Rush. Saw him at a book signing, and I still am taken aback. I behaved very badly. I was I knew what, exactly what I was going to say. I had this smug idea about talking about the wall base from England that Getty used in the mid eighties on the power windows and hold your fire tour. Now I'm down the rabbit hole. I, I apologize. But once I got in front of Getty, all I could do was curse like a madman that needed a shot of Thorazine. I just got in front of him and I was like, Oh my God, it's Getty Lee. It's Getty F and Lee. And he smiled and just went into this cool mode. How you doing? You know, I had my name on a, a little sticky note. So he, Call you know he said hi Keith and I that's when I lost it <laughs> somewhere along the way I pulled myself together and thanked him I think and told him that Rush was the soundtrack of my life and as as, as even a casual listener to this podcast will know let alone people who know me so that was amazing I was on cloud nine the next morning I went and saw a client and had an adjustment meeting on a on a, on a very interesting blowout that. Um, their neighbor, the neighboring oil company caused on their well. So uh, what a awesome start to November and then had a really good Thanksgiving yesterday and have been wanting to get back on the, behind the mic and just haven't had a chance. And now I really am babbling. So, okay, let me just, just a quick recap of this, this episode. And I hope to get some longer ones going, but it's 
please forgive me. This I feel like this is in many ways my first episode ever. So uh, I've only been rambling for about 15, not quite 15 minutes. But I am going to wrap it down. So never trust, always verify. That's a pillar of the private lender, especially if you don't know who, even if you know who the people are and you tr- you've got to verify these things, verify the property and verify the work has been done before you pay for that work. Uh, those are just two fail safes right there that'll that'll help keep uh, help, help keep your money a lot safer. So I'm, I'll hope to come back and, and tie the the pillars together in another episode. But I just want to talk about that. Never trust, always verify. The other thing, yeah, I I, <laughs> I got to meet my idol, one of my idols, one of my heroes, and now I've even more committed to to try to help you guys stay safe. And I, I, the stories like I've just told you on this episode, I, I, I want to avoid that as much as possible. And, and don't get me wrong, the borrower, I, I consider a friend, and I've never seen that type of behavior from from the borrower. So it all just feel you know feels back into this this episode of start with the uh, the, the worst case scenario in mind and, and and reverse engineer it from there. All right, I'm going to try to batch a few episodes, so I'm going to go get some water, pet the dog, and try to crank out uh, a few a few more episodes. Please keep contacting me. And a special announcement, Monday, what is Monday? The December, what, the 1st or the 2nd? Uh, 2nd. So December 2nd, somewhere around 7 or 8 Central Time, I plan to go live on Facebook with Ask a Private Lender. Just log in, connect, and you can text or uh chat some questions over and we'll answer them for a little while while the kids are away at soccer practice and hopefully we'll do that every week so ask a private lender monday december 2nd somewhere around 7 or 8 p.m on facebook there'll be more at private lender podcast facebook page and uh, as well as the my normal keith baker page so take care everybody i hope you're having a great thanksgiving and it's good to be back can't wait to talk to you some more Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.